I'm Stephanie Bolks, and I've been with the Egan Police Department for 32 years. Pat Gagan was the captain who was going to become the next chief. And he took his badge off and handed me his badge. And then um, Captain Asman came to the two of us and said, welcome aboard. Um, don't make any mistakes and let's go down to Denny's for breakfast. So I thought if I just come here and I'm nice to people and I'm kind and I do what I'm told, everything will be fine. I wouldn't say my parents were supportive of it, but they didn't fight me on it either. And my mom always said, I don't know, you'll be fine, honey. God is taking you down this path. My mom, she just used to, she used to tell us all the time, public service is really an admirable field. When she met my dad, she said, well, my job is to raise my children. And my mom quit her job, and she stayed at home, and she raised eight of us. I was working dog shifts, and my mom would always have coffee and breakfast waiting for me when I came home. I was so spoiled. I would tell my mom about my job. I grew up incredibly sheltered, and I remember my dad walked into the room and sat down, and he said, Steffi, I don't want you telling your mother those stories. She doesn't need to hear what's going on out there. Because I would share stories about, about the drunks or the domestics or the incidences that I was dealing with. I hear I'm a 22 year old woman and my dad is still telling me what to do. And you know what, I never spoke about my job again with my parents. Jerry Mazaris, he used to just laugh because people would say, I want to a real officer. So we would come in to handle calls and no one ever took me seriously. And then Jerry was always really good about saying, I don't know, what did she tell you to do? She's in charge. And that really helped me develop my confidence. Like, yes, I am in charge. This is my job. So I think that helped me develop my command presence and helped me to realize I need to just step up and be a big talker. My very first on call was um, a 10 month old that mom found him deceased in his crib. I said to my husband, I have to go in um, and it's a baby. And it was the same age as my son. So I remember going in and going in with Gary Cauldron, who was one of our medical examiners. And he knew I was a new mom. So we were talking about that. He said, what are you doing with all those boys at home? How are you managing? And now you're out here at two o'clock in the morning. And we both walked into the bedroom together and here was this pristine little baby boy dressed identical to how I had just left my son in a thermal union suit. And I remember just feeling warmth and my knees went weak and Gary kind of caught me. And I go, Gary, he looks just like Jeremy. And I remember Gary walking me out of the room and he said, you stay out here and you talk to the parents. That's how we survive, is that we work with people that are like us, that have the same compassion, the same empathy, and we all just kind of help each other. I still remember we had this big plan on Christmas Eve where I had taken a five gallon bucket and collected snow and made a whole bunch of snowballs. And then I climbed a big old oak tree over by, uh, over off of Daniel. And when one of the officers was gonna go off shift at two o'clock in the morning, he was gonna drive home and uh, we were just gonna pelt him with snowballs. So here I climb up in this tree and I'm up in the oak tree and uh, I needed one of the guys to help lift me up there. That's how high I was. So I get up there with this five gallon pail of snowballs and what I don't realize, it was a big joke on me. So no squad ever comes, nothing ever comes, and then they start giving calls out. I couldn't get out of the tree. I got a five gallon pail of snowballs and all I could think about was uh, how much trouble I'm gonna get in by my sergeant when he finds out, and then I find out my sergeant's in on it too, so. Jim and, and, and Loney had called uh, law enforcement because their son Christopher who had stayed home sick on Friday from school um, couldn't be found and their car was gone. They've never had any issues with Christopher at all and he was gone. 
and back then, and of course this is 1990, where there was some unwritten rule that we would, if your kid doesn't come home in 24 hours, then call us back. They were just runaways. Everyone was a runaway. If you didn't know where your kid was, he was just a runaway. They called and they were concerned about Christopher and said we've never had issues with him before and they got that they got an officer that said call us back tomorrow if he's not home by tomorrow. Well, Saturday came and the mail came and the Kersies had received a suicide note in the mail that was mailed by Christopher. We found out that Christopher's vehicle had been located by State Patrol and Linda had learned that his van was actually um, seen and observed parked up in Grand, the Grand Rapids area by a trooper on that Friday night. So we knew Christopher was up there. Right now we have all this wonderful grid searching and all this type of searching. Um, that isn't going on up there. I mean, there's, there's deputies riding around on horses and people walking ditches, but there's really no methodology that's going with that whole search and everything and, and unfortunately Christopher his remains were never located. I just felt that that was one of that was one of the reasons why I was in this job is to still keep their son alive. I just really felt that that was kind of my job is to always try and find Christopher for the Kersies before I retired and unfortunately that um, that never happened. You know, I think the, the fun about retirement is the unknown and knowing that I can now do anything I want to do because I paid my dues. When I became a mom, that's when I defined myself. I was a police officer, but I was always a mom first. And that has always been the priority in my life. When I was at the Egan Police Department, I gave you 110%. We see people at their worst, and that's when we need to be our best, is we need to be on our game. We need to help them hold the hands and get them through that. And, and then we're all gonna be better people when everything is done. Attention all squads, after 32 years of dedicated service to the city of Egan, Stephanie Bolts is 10 -7. We wish you luck and joy in your retirement. Congratulations.